Good morning, friends. It's Bob bringing you another few uh, reflections on what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, to become like Jesus over a period of time in a community with people. What I want to do is I want to take these next several posts and I want to kind of just talk with you about the process that we have gone through to kind of take this house church sort of approach and so that we're elevating the small to the same level of importance as the large meeting. And why why have we done that? It started out for me with uh, trying to be flexible and looking at this pandemic and trying to be uh, in a place where we were responsive to the governmental authorities. The scripture exhorts us to do that. Romans 13 is just one of the places that talks about that. Um, taking the, the, the virus seriously, yeah, we wanted to do that as well. Um, and yet, well, what are you doing? What are you doing in all this? And at one point in time, one of my friends had said, I just want it to be back to normal again. And, and with that, it just, there was something about that comment that just, just sort of disturbed me. And, and a lot of times when the Lord is speaking to us, it will have a disturbing sort of effect. It's one of the ways that sometimes we know that it's God. It's not accusatory or anything, but it's just, it's just inviting some more inquiry. And so, as I was listening to that, something just struck me. There's something about that. We want it just to go back to normal. And I saw that happening really all over America, especially in California, where people are like, we're not going to obey the government. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. And I'm like, Lord, are we even asking the right questions here? And so what it caused me to do is to ask that question, Lord, do you want it to be back to normal? That was the first question. And and I knew instantaneously when I asked that question that the Lord was like, yes, now you're asking the right question. Sort of like that movie, I, I Robot, that's the right question. And I asked that, Lord, do you want it to, do you want things to go back to normal and the way that we think normal is? And then the follow-up question, again, the Holy Spirit sort of just leading me on in this whole situation, this whole line of, of questioning, I asked then the question is, our normal something that you're good with and the answer coming back with that was conspicuously not really and i thought oh boy okay so i see where this is going i think and then and then i just you know chain reaction of a whole bunch of things going on in my own mind lord what do you want our activities to be accomplishing? And that answer was very clear. I want you to make disciples of my son. I want you to make disciples of Jesus. And so, you know, is our normal actually doing that well? And if it isn't doing that well, why are we investing so much energy and so much um, you know, money and everything into that particular product. I didn't believe that the Lord was saying, no, that's useless, but that we, he was calling us back into this dialogue with him of, are we investing in what is helping people become like Jesus, helping them grow up to be Christ-like, helping them to, to change within themselves in a way that actually reflects the master himself. And if I'm honest, and honestly, my whole, you know, my whole gift mix basically has been given all, practically my entire career to this Sunday morning product, trying to develop other things on the side, supplemental to supplement the Sunday morning uh, you know, the Sunday morning large gathering. But I, I had to come back to this idea that the Lord was saying, did you, Bob, look at how I did it. Look at how I did it. And as I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking, well, Jesus ministered to large crowds. The early church had, had different larger meetings at different points in time, but the real good stuff, the real the formational stuff happened around campfires. It happened in, on journeys together. It happened in the small, and it was exclusively in the small where, where these 12 people and these this larger group of that 12 were actually, they were formed in the smaller sort of meetings. And then I started going from there into all the early church and the, the, the ministry of the Apostle Paul going and planting in this village and that town and this city. And, and all of these meetings are small meetings. They're all small. 
And it made me have to kind of come back to the grips with that God is actually does his best work in the small, not in the big. We are wowed by the big. And there are things where the larger meeting actually does. That worship is great there. Proclamation of the gospel is is perhaps a, a you know it's it's more profoundly and and perhaps better done there not necessarily I'm not sure I buy that but but what is what what can happen in the small is simply just it floored me in terms of how much can happen in relationships in a small tight knit community a house church a church that meets in a home it's not a it's not a church service we're not trying to replicate sunday morning just in a smaller vehicle no it's a whole different learning kind of an environment so that's what got us onto the road to house churches which we launched this next coming week this is Thursday, and I'm just starting to sow these seeds. I want to show, sow in your imagination that this is not just good, not just something that some people really want. This is something that we want for everyone. This is something that God wants for everyone, especially you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I'll follow up on this tomorrow with some more discussion on this. Again, I want to ask you, I want to help you understand the why of House Church, because I believe if you understand the why, that it's a no-brainer, that you will participate, you'll join, and you'll grow. I love you. I'm praying for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless you.